Welcome to my lecture online. In this video and a few to come after this, we're going to talk about the barrier. And we've already realized that in classical mechanics, when a particle comes upon a barrier, where the potential of the barrier is greater than the energy of the particle, 100% of the particles will reflect off the barrier and go in the opposite direction. But in quantum mechanics, that's not the case. Depending upon the relative size of the energy of the particle versus the potential of the barrier, we have some of the particles that will be reflected and some that will actually transfer into the barrier and continue on. And if the barrier isn't very wide and the particle has sufficient energy, it can actually tunnel through the barrier and continue on the other side as if the way we've depicted right here. So we have the three regions, region one, region two, and region three. And we have the three waveforms of the, the three Schrodinger equations representing what a particle will do in each of the three regions. Notice we have two terms, one for the particle moving to the right and one for the particle moving to the left. We have the same for region two because potentially we could have some particles reflect off of this boundary and go in the opposite direction. So we have two terms for the second region. And in the third region, we have two terms, one for particles going to the right and one for particles going to the left. But since there's nothing on the right side to make particles reflect, g, the coefficient in front of this term right here, is equal to zero. So essentially, we do not have this term in region three. This simply goes to zero. Now, what we can also see is that there's some energy loss here in the, uh, in the transition going from region one to region three through the barrier that will result in a smaller amplitude in the oscillations of the particle on the right side here in region 3. However, notice that the wave number K3, which represents the wave number in region 3, is actually the same as the wave number in region 1, which means that the frequency and the wavelength doesn't change, just the amplitude changes. So we have a smaller amplitude in region 3 versus region 1. Now notice that here's the equation that tells us what the wave number is in region 1 and in region 3. It's 2m times the energy of the particle, we take the square root of that, divided by h bar. So depending upon how much energy the particle has, it will increase or decrease the, the wave number. Higher energy, that means a larger wave number, means a shorter wavelength or a higher frequency. In the barrier itself, notice we no longer have an oscillatory function. We have actually an exponential decay function, and that exponential decay coefficient is, is indicated by alpha, which is the square root of 2 times the mass of the particle times the difference in the energy of the barrier versus the energy of the particle. We always write the energy of the barrier first, knowing that this is larger than E, and so that's what we have right indicated right here. So it will be an exponential decay function going from the left side of the barrier to the right side of the barrier, which also means that any particles reflected off the back side of the barrier here, when they go the other direction, there'll be an exponential increasing function, and that's indicated by these two terms right here. A negative for exponential decay, a positive for exponential increase moving from right to left. So what we're interested in now is trying to determine what the function looks like on the other side and primarily what the amplitude will be of the wave function in region 3 versus region 1 depending upon the value of the energy of the particle, the mass of the particle, and also the, the energy or the potential of the barrier. So we'll show you how to go ahead and calculate how far through the barrier it will go, what the, what the amplitude will be once it passes through the barrier, how it will decay and so forth. So we'll figure out all those things, but here's just a general overview of what it looks like when a particle actually tunnels through a barrier that's not too wide. That's how it's done.